is back up in verse 7 when it talks about the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three being one. And you've heard me talk about it before. If I scratch the Holy Spirit's back, you know, Jesus and the Father would feel it because they are so one. And also we've talked about, like back in Genesis 1, when God says, let us make man in, in uh, our image. When God's saying, let us, he's talking about the three members of the Godhead, like he's talking here in verse 7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Um, of course, we know the Word as uh, Jesus. You know, he's the Word made flesh. And so these three are one. So all three members of the Godhead come together to do anything. Another verse I like was um, Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went around doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. We're in context here when it says how God anointed uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Remember, Jesus is God. He's not walking around on the earth as God, though. Uh, Philippians 2, he said he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. What that's saying is he didn't consider himself robbed when he humbled himself to step away from uh, being God. So he's, he's separating himself from being God while he's on the earth to operate as a man. So in, in context, Acts 10.38, when it says God anointed Jesus, is talking about God the Father. The Father anointed Jesus, who is the Word, with the Holy Ghost and power. So you see all three members of the Godhead coming together to do anything. And where we're going with this is you're going to see how all three members of the Godhead came together to create this life in you. Just like they created Adam in their image. And, and, it said, and the word says in chapter 2, and God formed man of the dust of the earth, I believe it says, and then breathed in him the breath of life. Of course, it's not hard to understand that breathing in him the breath of life is not talking about breathing in him oxygen um, because God, God doesn't breathe oxygen. He doesn't need something that he created to begin with to sustain himself. So if God's breathing something into Adam, we know he's breathing life into Adam. And when we got born again, and when Jesus shows up to the apostles in, in uh, John 20, and he says, and this is after he died and rose again, he says, uh, receive the Holy Ghost, and he breathed on them. You know, that isn't talking about receiving the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. That comes later. But when he says receive the Holy Ghost, what he's saying is the Father and Jesus have already done their parts in redemption. It's a completed work. Jesus is risen from the dead. Then he breathed on them. The, uh, receive the Holy Ghost is receive the work of the Holy Ghost. I'm breathing born again life into you and the Holy Ghost is going to go in and create that life in you. He's going to bring your dead spirit to life again. He's going to quicken you to life. Praise God. But the Holy Spirit was the last step in three members of the Godhead coming together to do anything. In this case, coming together to put created life in you, to born you again. The Father and, the G and Jesus already did their part. And then the Holy Spirit actually does the quickening work when you uh, hear the gospel. And it's absolutely wonderful. So that's what Jesus was doing for the apostles in John 20, is he was actually taking their spirit from death to life after he already provided redemption. And that's where we're going. And we're going to show you exactly how the Father and Jesus did their part. I'm so excited for it. 